Let me tell you something. Experience doesn't always equal confidence. Although you have always heard when you were younger, you have heard it at your job, you have heard it from your parents, you have heard it over and over and over again. I know, I did too. I heard that experience equal confidence. That is not always true. It can be a factor in confidence, but it's not always true when it comes to confidence. I have worked with many people who are skilled. They have accolades on their wall, years of experience. They have taken actions to be able to do all of these things. And guess what? They don't have confidence because confidence doesn't always equal experience. Confidence can be a mixture of several things, but I'm going to share with you eight things that I believe why some people, although they have the experience and all of the accolades that would say you should be confident, they don't have it. And the description box of this video, you are going to see more information that I wrote on my LinkedIn. And I just want to explain that to you guys here as I go along sharing um, this information. And number one is negativity. People that lack confidence, they lack it because of negativity. And one of the things that I wrote is you can have lots of actions in your work, lots of experience, but the outcomes of the emotions that you experience might be very negative. You might have received a lot of negative feedback in the process. So what happened is that your brain remember all of the negative feedback and all of the good things that you did or the lessons you could have learned from that experience destroy your confidence and give you self-doubt. And that's the reason why it leads to a self-doubt that is just repeating, repeating, and you get in this process of fear of trying it again, rather than building confidence by saying, hey, I messed up. I learned something from it. No, I'm going to do something different. But a lot of people, they have so much experience, but the fear is so much higher that they allow that negativity to destroy their confidence. The number two is going to be perfectionism. Volunteer right here. I have always been a perfectionist in the past. I try not to be a perfectionist now, but every time that you experience perfectionism, you always look at your work with a heavy critical eye instead of patting yourself in the back for even trying it, for even taking a risk to do something new. So when it comes to perfectionism, we are highly, um, are highly bad at doubting ourselves, doubting our, our experience, doubting the path that we have taken. And again, instead of looking at it as, you know, I tried it, I did it, maybe it did not work out, but no, I know what didn't work out. And next time I try something again, right? So it's that cycle of, I have to do it better. I did not do it right. Oh, you know, that is a problem. Okay. And that problem can destroy your confidence. The next thing is, ooh, 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 number three, imposter. You have heard about the imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome doesn't only happen to people that are new or novice, um, that are inexperienced. Imposter syndrome also takes place to people that are overly, overly experienced. They experience imposter syndrome. And that is because they feel that they don't deserve that success that they just gained. They feel that, um, you know, their brain is telling them, you know, that other person maybe did it better than you. Their brain is telling them, maybe you don't have enough experience. Their brain is making them feel like you are not 
capable of really doing that job. They might be, they might get offers to do an amazing job and they reject those offers because they feel the imposter syndrome, which hinders their confidence. And that's the reason why, although they have all of these experience, the confidence they don't have because of the imposter syndrome. Number four is going to be understanding, understanding, Ooh, understanding. Well, you know, once we can understand the work that we do, that is what makes us expert in understanding and being able to explain it to other people. But if we don't understand or what experience, if we don't understand the mistakes that we have made, if we don't acknowledge that we have grown, if we don't acknowledge that there was a lesson learned in all of this, if we do not take hold of analyzing ourselves and seeing that the process that we experience, we needed to experience that process. Even if it was challenging, we had to go through that. And when we acknowledge that, when we understand that all of this had to happen, then we have more confidence. And that's the reason why it says confidence comes with understanding. Not only understanding the subject, but understanding yourself. Understanding why you did what you did how would you fail, and what the lesson that you learned from that failure. That's what confidence is when it relates to experience. Number five, that is going to be comparison. Do you ever compare yourself with people? I know I have. I know sometimes I think about it and I have to slap myself. Wake up, Sandra. Wake up. Because comparison is never going to lead to confidence. Compare yourself to last year and do better than you did last year. But when you start comparing yourself to other people, guess what? There's always going to be someone that is going to be better than you at whatever is it that you do. No matter how many years experience you have, there's always someone that can do it better than you. So if you compare yourself to people, guess what? At some point, you're going to feel crappy about yourself. And feeling crappy is going to not allow you to be confident. So what happens is that when you compare yourself, you diminish the value that you have. All the effort that you put into your work, you diminish all of that. You put yourself in a place where anybody can destroy you because you think of yourself down here and you think of someone else up here, which can be a confidence killer. Number six, that is going to be emotions. Women are not the only one that get emotional, especially single moms. The married women are not the only one that supposedly confident because they have a man or whatever, okay? All of us experience emotions. Some days they are stronger than others. But when it comes to emotions, <coughs> even though we have experience, different people experience different emotions. Different people have different resilience level. Different people have different mental level. Different people experience anxiety which it can cause them to have self-doubt, which it can hinder, damage their confidence. And that's the reason why if you are anxious um, and you make that anxiety a barrier for your confidence, it will keep you away from starting new things, from succeeding, from growing, from taking risks. And that's the reason why you have to constantly analyze your emotions and put yourself in your place 
not waiting for other people to do that for you, but analyze yourself and acknowledge what is it that you did well and what is it that you did wrong. And once you do that, you will see that you will be more confident because you can admit, I screwed up here and I'm really good here. I am confident because I know that I'm not good at everything, but I'm very clear at what I am good at. I am very clear at what I suck at, okay? Very clear about that. And as long as you have that clarity, you can ask people that are good at what they're good at and better than you for help. And you can volunteer and support people with confidence with the areas that you know that you are good at without doubting yourself. So you have to check your emotions from time to time and put them in place so that you can experience more confidence in your life. Number seven and the last um, point that I want to make in the number seven, of course, you know, I'm going to talk after that. I talk a lot, so I'm going to talk more. But the other one is validation. A lot of people that I have talked to, they say that they are confident. Confident. But their confidence is so damaged that they are always seeking validation. And confidence asks questions. Confidence acknowledge, I don't know everything, but confidence don't always seek validation. When you are seeking validation from the world, not from yourself, you are trying to say that, mm, I don't trust myself. I, I, I am not worthy or I, I might not really know what I say that I know. You are telling yourself, your thoughts, that I'm not sure that I'm doing this right. So therefore, I need to put it in front of many people and find out what they think so that they can validate that I'm going on the right path. Even if you're going on the wrong path, you should know that that's the path that you want to take. You don't ask a hundred people, not even 10 people, should I go that route? Stop asking for validation. You can ask for advice to make an informed decision. You can do some research, but there's a big difference between advice, research, and validation. And people that are always seeking validation they lack confidence because they are trying to get approval from everyone. And all of those people that you're trying to get approval from, not everyone is going to be on your side. And some people are going to give you bad advice because they may be jealous about your skills. They don't want you to excel. There may be lots of reasons. And then you believe them because you are seeking validation and you go on the wrong path. And then you can't blame anybody because everything is your responsibility, okay? So in order for you to be more confident, if you believe that you have all the experience that is needed for the next job or for the whatever it is that you want to do, if you believe that you have years of experience and you have all of the experience, but you lack confidence, let me share some of the things that I want you to acknowledge. I want you to acknowledge that failure is okay. Failure is okay. Failure is okay. Every time you try something new, at some point you might fail. And when you fail, you become an expert in that area. And then... If you take that failure as a positive result, then it gains confidence. If you take that failure as a negative result, then you're going to experience self-doubt and you're always going to seek validation. 
The next thing, set realistic expectation. Celebrate your accomplishment. Every time I do something good, I don't wait for anybody to celebrate. I celebrate for myself. I applaud myself. I pat myself on the back. Because when the difficult times come, and if I am experiencing some type of self-doubt, I remember the moments that I celebrated. I remember what I did well and how good I am. And I know that if I did it well before, I'm going to do it well again. I want you to remember the next thing is you need to foster. Foster a mindset of, I can do this. I will do it. I am a conqueror. I am powerful. I am a finisher. Whatever is it that it's going to take for you to build confidence, start putting that in your mind and making sure that every good experience you have, you take that experience and you save it in your heart, save it in your brain for the next time when you're having a difficult time. And when you fail, when you make a mistake, when you say something stupid, or when some people disagree with you, learn. What is the lesson that you learn from that experience instead of beating yourself up? And then keep it inside of your mind and remember that only, only through humility can you learn from your negative experiences. If you take it up, that person don't like me, that person judge me, that person criticize me, they are, they don't like my color, they don't like because I am one woman, they don't like whatever reason, that is an excuse. Acknowledge your failures and you will do better the next time. So start putting that in your mind and you will see that you're going to get stronger in that area. And then the other stuff is, just make sure that you engage in reflecting practices. Reflect on your actions. Reflect on your experiences. Reflect on criticisms that people gave you. Reflect on your successes. Reflect, reflect, reflect. You see all of those stickies that I have everywhere? Those are reminders for me. I have reminders over there that are positive notes. I have this in the back that you see here, they all have to do because I'm a UX engineer, researcher, whatever, all have to do with my work. So that when I want to make sure that I understand something or I am having a little doubt on something, I go back to some of those notes to be able to understand, oh, that's what I have to do. My notes, I build this for myself, for me, to remind me of my strength. I have notes on this side of the wall that are biblical notes. When I'm feeling spiritually drained, I look at all of these notes that have Bible verses. They have all kind of verses here to be able to help me be confident spiritually. Then when I come to single moms that I'm talking to, I have a lot of notes on that side of the wall to be able to remind you single moms you single mom, that you have what it takes to be able to be successful. And don't let anybody, because they have more experience than you, feel that they can destroy your confidence because you don't have the level of experience that they have. You can have confidence without all of their experience, okay? Then I have more messages everywhere because that how that's how it helps me so you have to find what helps you to be you allow you to stand firm persevere and enjoy you okay anyway this message is for anybody but this channel as you can see is really dedicated to single moms god bless you and you know Tell me how do you feel about your confidence level right now and what type of experience do you have? Okay, bye.